Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Eye on Hakko. My name is Kenta. And today I'm excited to introduce a new product that will be available starting next month and it's called the FX1003 Micro Tweezers. Now, before we jump right into the uh, FX1003 tweezers, uh, let me just say a little bit about some of our electronic devices that we see in our everyday lives now. We have our things like our computers, our TVs, cameras. We have, of course, our smartphones. We have our watches, smart watches, uh, tracking devices, health monitors, you name it. There's just a lot of more electronic devices that we use in our everyday lives, making our lives that much easier. Um, and as those technology advances on, on these electronic devices, the, the circuit boards that are inside of these electronic devices, they're becoming, uh, they're changing. The boards are becoming a lot more densely populated. They're releasing uh, heat much more efficiently. You're seeing flexible boards. You're seeing a lot more surface mount components uh, compared to through hole components. And the, uh, the components themselves, they're becoming a lot more smaller than what we were used to seeing five, 10, 20 years ago. So what does that mean? That means that the, uh, the manufacturers who are making uh, these devices, there has to be a way to, for them to solder these small, super tiny components. And at times there has to be a way for them to uh, remove or rework these uh, tiny components as well. So that is where the uh, new FX1003 becomes very helpful. And that's what I'm gonna be talking to you guys about today. So the FX1003, it can be plugged in right into the uh, FX100 soldering station. For those of you who don't know what the FX100 is, it's Hakko's induction heating soldering station. Uh, currently we have two hand pieces that you can plug into the FX100, one being the FX1001 standard hand piece. It uses the T31 series of tips. And the other accessory is the FX1002 micro iron that uses the T35 series of tips. The FX1002 being a micro iron, it's great for working under the microscope because it uses uh, much more smaller, finer tips and the handpiece is a lot smaller and shorter, allowing you to work comfortably under the microscope. So those were the two um, accessories that we're able to plug into the FX100. Up until now, now we will have the FX1003 micro handpiece that you can now plug in directly into the FX100. Just pl unplug your old handpiece and plug in the new FX1003 handpiece and you're ready to go. Now the uh, 1003, FX1003 being that it's being powered from the uh, FX100, naturally it's gonna be powered up using the induction heat technology. So what does that mean? It means that the temperature is gonna be predetermined by the tips themselves. Okay, so for the FX1003, there's gonna be a new series of tips called the T38 series of tips. Again, two different temperature ranges. One is gonna be in the T38-03, which is the 350 degrees Celsius or 660F Fahrenheit. And the other temperature range will be the T38-02, uh, which is the 400 Celsius or 750 degrees Fahrenheit temperature range. The tips are going to, again, going to be a lot uh, smaller. They're going to be finer. They're going to be precision made to allow you to work on these super tiny components um, down to the 0201s, even down to the 01005s. Um, so the two temperature ranges, what else? The, the tips, the T38 tips, they'll be available in seven different uh, shapes. It's going to be the I, the IS, J, JS, L1, L2, and the K type. Uh, now to go a little bit into detail on the tips, the I, that's gonna be our conical tip shape, and the IS is gonna be the finer pointed uh, conical shape. So the difference between the two, the I has the uh, point radius of 0.15 millimeters, and the IS, which is the finer pointed um, version of the conical, has a point radius of 0.05 millimeters. Um, there's also the J and the JS, same difference. The J has the point of 0.15 millimeters. The JS is the finer pointed J um, that has a 0.05 millimeter radius endpoint. Um, there's also the L shape. Um, the L shape, think of it as kind of like a uh, flathead chisel shape. There's the one millimeter version, which we call the L1, and the two millimeter version, which we call the L2. 
And last but not least, we have the knife blade shape, which we call the K-type. So again, in total, seven different tip shapes, the I, the IS, the J, the JS, the L1, the L2, and the K. So seven different shapes available in the O2 and in the O3 temperature ranges. So new series of tips, T38 series of tips, attaches to the FX 1003 handpiece. Now, this is where it starts to become interesting. The FX1003, FX the new handpiece is very compact, lightweight in, in design. As you can see here, it fits comfortably on, in my hands. Very lightweight, so it doesn't fatigue my hands as you're using it. And actually, I'm already here working under the microscope, so you can see that I can work comfortably even under the microscope, okay? And you'll notice right away that there are two yellow dials on the handpiece here. Those are actually adjustment dials that you can uh, make on the handpiece itself. There's, a, there's actually four different adjustments that you can make on the handpiece, these being um, two out of the four. So this one adjusts the height, there's one adjustment for the height, there's one adjustment for the width, and there's a couple more um, right here that you can adjust the rotation and for the length of the tips themselves. So there's a total of four adjustments. So let's start off talking about the, uh, the dial, the yellow dial on the right. That is to adjust the height in between the two tips. Um, so I think we'll put up a slide for that to give you a better, better uh, feel for what I'm talking about. Um, the height you can adjust on the, the right side, up or down, plus or minus one millimeter in, uh, in that direction, only on the right side. And with that there, what's that, why that is there? Because you can uh, adjust it so that you're making the, just the right amount of contact between the tweezer tip ends and the component uh, itself. Okay, so again, plus or minus one millimeter in the height. And the dial on the left, that's for the width the width in between the, uh, the two tweezer uh, tip ends. So you can see I can close them in like so. And as I'm rotating, I can also open them up a little bit more. So it depends on what type of component that you're actually trying to rework. You can close them in, makes it easier for you to come down, grab and pull away. So again, this is the height, this is the width. There's also two additional adjustments where you insert the tips. Let's see if you get a better view, there you go. This is where you insert the tips and there's one dial here, kind of has like this hook shape on it. That is for rotation. You can rotate the tips in up to 200 degrees of rotation so that you're, again, you're trying to make the best possible contact between the tip and the component itself. Um, so when you're using tips shapes such as the J, JS, either one of the L's or the K-type tip. Um, it allows you up to 200 degrees of rotation to set the tip ends to your uh, preference so that it matches up well between the tips and the components themselves. And the, uh, the last adjustment uh, capability that's built into the handpiece is this dial right underneath the rotation dial. This dial, you, you, as you turn it, you'll be able to adjust the, uh, the length of the tip so you can um, extend it up to uh, 1.5 millimeters uh, forward. So if you're looking to just get a little bit more reach from your tips, uh, you'll be able to do that. And for the rotation and the length, you'll find it on both sides, the left and the right, so you can adjust it on both sides as well. Because sometimes, you know, the height, adjusting the height, adjusting the rotation um, may not be good enough. Um, sometimes you want that extra length, uh, the tweezer tip. Uh, this FX1003 has that capability to do so. So there's four different ones, height, width, rotation, and uh, length. So there's four, uh, you don't need to use all four if it's not necessary, but we built in four for your preference uh, to allow our customers to be able to um, customize it a little, so to speak, and to set it according to their preference. Um, I always think about it in like, say a car, for example, a car already has a uh, set suspension on there, so you can drive it out of the lot, no problem. Uh, you can ride it, no problem. But if you're looking for, you know, better ride performance out of your car, 
Um, then you would want to go into the suspension settings and adjust the ride height, for example. You want to adjust the, the ride suspension cambers, the suspension toes in or out. Um, same thing with the tweezers. Um, at, right out of the box, you have the tweezer handpiece. You plug in your tips and turn on the FX100. You're ready to go, no problem. You can use it right away. But if you're looking for just a little bit more uh, preference, uh, customization, uh, we have four built-in adjustments there to, for you to be able to set the rotation or adjust the length a little bit or adjust the height a little bit. Again, just to make sure that you're making that nice, perfect contact between the component and the, uh, the tweezer tip ends because because when you're working with such fine components, um, any kind of adjustment does do help and do the trick. So um, I think I talked a, long, a lot right now. Um, I'm kind of tired of talking, so I think I'm gonna get into actual demonstration of using the tweezer. Um, I do have a uh, eye shape, a O2 eye shape, already uh, plugged into my handpiece. I'm gonna turn on the station and I have a few uh, sample boards or scrap boards here lying around that I will try to remove uh, some components and just give everyone a good idea of how it works. So let me see. Now, forgive me. I'm gonna say this ahead of time, but forgive me if I shake. I'm gonna try not to, but here, here we go. I have a few components here that I can just grab and remove. Then I'll go ahead and place it on the penny here just to give you a sense of how small these uh, components are. And let me try to do another one. And go move and let me get this. And let me get this set down here. Then I have another board. Um, and this one has even smaller components. So I'm gonna try to remove these. Go. Get this down here. And let me try to see if I can find another one. Maybe up here. There we go. So again, the T38 series of tips, very uh, small, fine, they're precision made. Combined with uh, the new handpiece makes it very easy for me to work on those super tiny components as you see there, uh, working comfortably under the microscope. And um, I, have a, I have another board and I'll show you an example, but before I switch over to this other board, I just wanna show everyone our new iron holder and uh, some new cool features that we have built in to show them how to uh, exchange the tips. So this is a new holder for the FX1003, right? Um, new receptacle. So you'll see right away we have some new features like built-in tip holders. We finally have a tip holder tray on the iron holder, right? And you also find a couple slots on both sides of the receptacle. And what those are used for is that you'll insert the tip like so, press down, and you'll be able to remove the tips. Same thing on the other side. Insert the tip into the slot, press down, and you'll be able to remove the tips without using a heat pad. So no more using a heat pad and no more uh, grabbing the tips with like, say like a vice grip or pliers, please, because uh, these are very uh, precision tools and you don't want to be grabbing your, uh, these tips with pliers. They might end up damaging them. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a new set of, um, tips, turn the station back on, make a few small adjustments on the uh, tip alignment to make sure that I can uh, grab them. So let's go ahead and get this other board that I have here. Okay, let's do this. Um, 
the 120s. You can see that I've been practicing a little bit on these. So let's grab some of these as an example. These are some of the larger ones. Again, do another one. Uh, am I on camera? There you go. Very easy working under the microscope if you need to remove some of these uh, super tiny components. Okay, so again, um, new handpiece, new tips, new iron holder for the FX1003. Um, again, it's, it's four levels of adjustments. Uh, they're all there for you to be able to set just get the right contact between the component and the uh, and the tips themselves. Uh, there's also an optional accessory I forgot to mention. There's also a, uh, we're gonna be coming out with an optional um, brush. It's gonna be a new cleaner brush that you can we'll have available for the, for the FX1003. Um, the kit, the standard kit comes with a cleaning sponge and a cleaning uh, brass wire. But like I said, we'll have this uh, new brush, which is also made out of uh, brass. Uh, also available as an optional accessory. It's called the A5065. Um, it kind of looks like one of those polishing brushes that you use to polish your shoes. Kind of looks like that. Uh, but it's great for uh, some tip ends, finer tip ends like the J shape, so that it doesn't it clean the J tip uh, very well. If you use the, the wire, sometimes the end hook end of the J tip may get caught in the wire, so that's why you came out with this brush. Uh, to allow you to comfortably clean off those uh, hooked J-type tips. Um, and uh, the new brush, the A5065, it's an optional accessory, but you can not only use it on the FX1003 holder, but you can also use it on the, uh, the micro FX1002 holder and also on the standard FX1001 holder as well because they do all use the same, uh, same base. So you can use it on uh, those iron holders as well. And like I said, now we have a uh, three optional accessories, the standard iron, the micro iron, and the FX1003 uh, micro tweezers, all available for the FX100. So for those FX100 users, we finally have a rework tweezer available for you to uh, start re reworking and removing those components. Uh, very super tiny components, as you saw here. Um, that is about it. Um, if you need more information on the products, uh, you can visit hakousa.com. Or if you have any questions about what we went over today, um, you can email us at support at hakousa.com. We will try to keep these uh, Iron Hako webinars, keep them going. Um, but until next time, thanks for watching. And remember, keep your Iron Hako.